Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back <clears throat> to another paint session. So, today's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to paint with water mixable oils. And the reason why I'm doing that today, one, I've, got, I've gotten a lot of comments about the water mixable oils. Two, there's been some misinformation and a lot of conflicting information and some confusion about water mixable oils. And three, I just thought, well, since I have a lot of... I, the third reason is because I looked on YouTube, a lot of the uh, material that's been covered on water mixable oils, we're talking about five, two, six, seven years ago, okay? And a lot of artists have been that have been using uh, water mixable oils. A lot of them have reverted back to traditional. Some have stayed because of their allergies or whatnot. So <clears throat> let me just go over before we start this painting about the water mixable. Some information. So that's one. Second thing I've been asked a lot is using water mixable oils with traditional oils. Okay, you can use water mixable oils okay uh, this is a cobra i have a whole bunch sitting here from different brands you can use water mixable oils with traditional oils only if well not only if let me take that back you can use it with traditional oils if you're going to clean with a solvent meaning a traditional solvent like odorless mineral spirit or turpentine, okay? You can use them together. I can use this Cobra with the Windsor & Newton regular non-water mixable oil. I can mix them together, no problem, and they'll clean off with regular turpentine, no problem. Now, if you do the opposite way around, use traditional oil paints into uh, water mixable oils, you cannot use water to clean it, all right? That should be like an obvious. You can't do that. You could do water mixable to traditional and clean it with the solvent, but not uh, traditional to water mixable and try to clean it with water. You can't do that. Now, <clears throat> some people say, well, can you mix acrylics because it's got a water medium to it or, you know, gouache, I've seen that come up too. Okay, with that and that particular scenario, you can use a little bit. And when I say a little bit, I would not go more than 10 to 15% uh, per volume. I, I would not say, I would say no more than 10, 15% by volume with your traditional paint. Okay, so 15% of acrylics or whatever other paint you want to use with the uh, water mixable oils or even traditional oils for that matter no more than 15% otherwise you're gonna have issues with a binding what's the other one okay mediums you cannot use traditional linseed oil or mediums with water mixable oils this is hold on let me fix this real quick This is Artisan Water Mixable Linseed Oil, okay? You want a fast drying medium? Water Mixable Fast Drying Medium. You want a f just a painting medium? They have that too. Painting medium. This just helps with the flow and uh, draw slows down the drying times a little bit, okay? Again, water mixable. So I think that's, uh, that's that with the mediums. You cannot use traditional mediums with water mixable oils. The only way, the only time you can use it is if you're going to use the traditional water mixable oil as a traditional paint, meaning you're going to clean it with solvent, then you can use it. You could use this just like traditional oil, the same way with solvent but you cannot you know go back and forth meaning that you know if i start using this paint right here and start cleaning with solvent well guess what 
then you might as well finish the whole palette using it the traditional way. You cannot, you know, use it and then uh, use the same brush to, to clean with water, all right? You don't want to do that. Absolutely not. It's a no-no. Okay, so that we understood. Next, brushes. You don't want, you really don't want to use, and it's not really recommended to use any kind of bristle brush, okay? Because if you use like a hog hair, any kind of bristle, natural bristle brush, what happens that with, with water mixable oils, you don't want to do that because the natural bristles will absorb uh, too much water, one, you know, and then it's going to make it really hard to, your, plate, your paint's going to slide all over the place, it's not going to dry fast enough, and plus you're going to have this problem with tackiness. Your paint's staying tacky and it, uh, it's really a pain in the ass, so you don't want to do that. You want to use synthetic. Synthetic brushes or you know, maybe a synthetic blend. So I have some brushes here, some old ones I'm going to use just for this demo because this is just going to be a simple demo just to show you how I lay it on, the steps, how I use water mixable. So <clears throat> I have a variety of, uh, these are all, all of these are synthetic brushes. None of them are regular bristle brushes. All right, now we got that down. So let me go over the colors. I have a nine by 12 here. I think it's a nine by 12. Yeah, it's a nine by 12. I got cad yellow. No, actually, no. Primary yellow, yellow ochre, primary red, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, uh, primary blue, and um, French ultramarine and titanium white. <clears throat> now, some of these are like Cobra. I love Cobra. I like him really much, very much. This is Windsor & Newton Artisan. They're good, but the only problem that I have with them is that they are a little bit too stiff for my taste. Lucas Berlin are good as well. They're very good middle of the road uh, water mixable paint. And I have, <clears throat> if you don't want to spend too much money, you can use these Georgian. They're not bad. Um, they're student grade, but they work, you know, they do the job. Especially if you're going out to do a study and uh, you want to go out plein air doing studies. They, they clean up really good and then what I like about these is like they're very buttery. Just like the Cobras. Now Cobra claims, you could go on their website that you could just use water to um, throughout the whole paint, throughout the whole painting to do uh, to clean and to use as a medium. Now, I don't recommend to do that. I mean, only if you know what you're doing, because with each subsequent layer, you want to use less and less water because water is going to get trapped, and then your paint's not going to dry. It's going to stay tacky for a very long time. It happened to me before. And boy, let me tell you, that's why I stopped painting with water mixable. All right, I'm going to stop blabbing right now. I just want to get that out of the way to help you out. And some, uh, here's some water in here. I just wanted to get rid of, uh, rid of some of the confusion. So here's what I'm painting now that we're finished with that. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section and I will try and answer them for you. So we're just going to do this. Let me put it this way. This simple little painting. Okay. So I know everybody likes seascape. And it's just for the demo itself. All right. So I'm going to start with the top. So usually I want to start with my th a thin layer of paint. I'm going to use uh, all-terrain blue. A little bit of burnt sienna to do those rock formation. Now... I can use a thinner, I forgot to tell you, I'm gonna mix a little bit of water mixable linseed oil right in here. And a little bit of drying medium. So that could help the paint set up a little bit quicker. So just a little bit of both. You could do half and half or just a little bit. There you go, not very much. Okay, to recap, I'm using ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, I could use even a little bit of uh, red in this. Now I feel my paint is a little bit stiff, I'm going to use a little bit of medium, 
there you go instead of using water so and I'm I'm painting on a rough canvas here this is just like a one of those just uh, not too expensive canvas here Put a little medium right now you see me I'm scrubbing I'm really painting it thin here these are the rocks I'm gonna try and post a picture somewhere in one of the corners for you to look at you don't want to start out too thick you even if it's um, water mixable oils you want to respect the thick over thin um, yeah thin uh, yes thick over thin say that ten times thick over thin So right now I'm putting in a thin layer and then the subsequent layers are going to be a little bit thicker and perhaps maybe with less medium. Now I just cleaned off my brush with water and you can see some paint is still coming off the brush. Okay, You want to clean your brush really good and get all that water out. Okay, next step, I want to go some wave action. So a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of perhaps crimson, white, and maybe a little bit of yellow ochre to tone down this purple here. Really make it a little bit more grayish, maybe perhaps a little bit more blue. There you go. Put some medium. If you're new to my channel, you'll learn that I paint in a very impressionistic style. We're not worried about details in the beginning. All we want to do is just cover the canvas as quick as possible. And, uh, Not worry so much about detail. If you hear that background noise, it's just a, <laughs> the, the washing, the dryer, or the washing machine. I'm in my garage painting. All right, let's start painting some of these blue waves. So I'm going to go to mass. Okay, this is what you see here, this little white wash in the background. And now we're just going to paint this whole mass here. These are some of my old acrylic brushes. Okay, so let's start with ultramarine blue. Little bit of primary yellow. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. Put some medium on there. And I'm putting burnt uh, sienna in there just 
<clears throat> to mute down the color a little bit. I'm starting to see a little bit more on the greenish side here. Put a little bit of burnt sienna. Again, I put the burnt sienna to mute the color. Maybe add a little bit of alizarin crimson, um, alizarin, oh, ultramarine blue. Just like to make a transition color. This is really rough. Put some of these dark areas and you will see why in a minute as I start putting some highlight this trough and the crest of the wave the trough of the wave you'll see these dark darker areas and I'm going like in a trying to go into like in a C C shape like this okay and a zigzag c shape just a little bit everywhere some darker blue some lighter just to show motion of the wave C shape like this. Right now I'm using a number six flat. And notice I'm not even using any kind of round brush just to mimic that motion. Just using a number six and I'm pressing pretty good on this because this canvas is kind of rough. Let's do the dark areas under that buoy. Ultramarine blue is sufficient with burnt sienna. So it's like Just elevate that just a little bit to give a sense of roundness. A 
Let me outline my buoy here. I see some darks in the back as well. There's some dark here. There's a cast blue cast shadow right here of that buoy. There you go. But it all seem like once about the same value. Actually, this goes up a little bit higher. I'm working a little bit everywhere because I'm letting some of this set up a little bit so I can go over it. All right, I see some. Let me wipe off some of this. I basically have water, a little bit of damp water on my brush here. Almost like cleaning with turpentine. Just clean it off. I put too much. I'm just shaping up my Okay, so let's go with some yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre. Start off with my lighter area first because I don't want to contaminate it. If I started out with red, then it would be hard to make this bright yellow. So I start with my yellow, uh, lightest color. Try to keep it clean and it's thin right now. Okay. So now I'm going to go with a number two filbert and work the rest of the magic here. So let me finish some parts of this uh, dark area. Some primary red. Cad yellow. Put some of that wherever I see it. Let the colors mix, it's okay. See some up here. I'm gonna go with the Lizard and Crimson. Ultramarine blue for the darker red back here. Some of it same here like that. I'm 
Let me put some Cad Red Deep here. Put it right here. I'm using it because I have it. I haven't used these water mixables in a long time, so I'd hate for it to go to waste. So I'm just using whatever I have in the best way possible. Let some of that mix together. Blend some of these edges. There's like nice bright white right here somewhere, right here. Blend the edges a little bit. Blend it with the background. Okay, let me make <clears throat> some of these dark red spots. I don't have any burnt, burnt umber would have worked for me at this point, but I don't have it, so I'm going to make do with what I have here. Some of these stains on the buoy. And right now, as you can see, I'm not even using any medium. I'm just going a little thicker than what I initially started with. Let me put some highlights of yellow and then I'm going to move on. Let me see. Yellow. I'm going to use a little bit of medium. So the paint will release easier as well. There's some
let's work some darks here and because what I did here I went with the middle value meaning a one would be white a 10 will be black so I went right in between it's not that dark so now what that does is gives me the flexibility of going back and adding where I feel needs darker colors you'll see what I mean by that in a sec I'm going with a thicker paint maybe some medium so look at that almost black I could almost make some black here just shape these rocks the way I want them to be just where I think these darks need to go I'm looking at my reference photo I'm not doing exactly where all the darks are supposed to go just whichever one that catches my eyes first are most likely going to catch your viewers eyes as well so do those the one that really hits you right off the bat like this general area right here put more earthy color some sienna more of a brown there you go give it some shape Remember, the rocks are really not the focus of the painting, so I don't care about their definition. Add a little bit of yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Give some warmth. Make it like a, some greenish. Let me add some more sienna, maybe a little bit of red to that yellow ochre perhaps maybe a little bit of white Just varying some of the darks and some of the lights here. Like I said, I don't want to give it too much attention. Maybe barely some highlights back there. I'm just using this mix that's already here. Just adding white to it. It's like a really great down red. And let's say show some. Some highlights here, there, these rocks. All right, let's start working on some of the waves here in the back. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Work on some of these wash. There's another rock here, but we're not going to put that one in. We're just going to leave it. Just putting pure white. If you feel like you're not putting enough Color. Let's say if this, if this white is not showing off too good, that means your color surrounding the white is not dark enough. If, if your white's not standing out enough. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. Watch this.
See that? White is showing off a little bit more than before. Let's put some shadows into these waves. There you go, just like that. Put some cool shadows too. Put a little bit more cool blue. I'm using primary primary blue here and there just to mix these together over here. Okay, now putting some darks and lights in the wave. We're gonna push and pull on this, okay? So I can see some dark greens. Let's put some burnt sienna, primary blue, and yellow. Put some of these vivid dark green. Make sure you're using a little bit thicker this time. The whoops. A little bit of medium to let the paint come off your brush real easily. Back side of this wave. Remember the sun's coming in this direction. So give this a little bit of um, there you go. Remember the waves are all going in different directions. Just think about the motion of the waves. Okay, and you could crisscross them. Some darker areas. Folks, I can tell you with practice, you can do this, okay? I didn't just learn this overnight. You put some dedication into it. Keep practicing. You, you, you have to want it, okay? You have to want it. It's gonna come. You just need practice. And again, like I'm using thicker paint. And I'm being very loose about this. I'm not even really Hardly looking at my reference photo here. I'm just going by feel a little bit. Okay. So now, well, maybe a little bit more here somewhere. More on the blue side. All right, let's start putting some highlights. We'll go with the cooler blue here. White, maybe a little bit of yellow. Use some thick paint. I'm using primary blue here. Light touches. I'm 
not really using this too hard here. A little bit of yellow. Put some medium so this can flow. And I'm letting some of the blue from the initial uh, colors show through. Okay. Zigzag pattern. Between these darks here. Get some definition in here as well. I'm using less yellow at this point just to have some uh, some uh, variations of blues and greens. Put some medium if your paint's not flowing very well. Put add medium. See. Paint's coming right off now. And as the waves are closer, you'll see bigger shapes forming. Okay, as the waves go back there, your, your uh, details are going to be smaller versus up front. The height and... Uh, And build of the wave is just bigger up front. Let me use some ultramarine blue with that. Mix it up a little bit. There you go, some variation. Go some darker greens again. Use that same mix here. Let me use a little bit of yellow ochre, blue, and sienna. Add some more shadows here and there. I'm starting to use thick paint. You don't see me dipping my medium too many times. Just from time to time. There's a shadow here of the buoy. Let me add some little waves, white caps.
some sparkling water here and there. Okay. That lizard crimson is so stiff. That's from that Windsor and Newton. Just falling right off. Reflections from the buoy here. Now for uh, a little bit of detail, there's, let me see. There's some sort of handle. Here. light touch and then there's another one back here let's put a cast shadow not a cast shadow but a shadow down here to define it and look at I'm still using a fat brush here but just make sure you got a nice crips, crips, crisp edge on your brush to run these small details. I'm going at the bottom. There you go. Also, I see like a rope hanging. A half dead rope back there. Let's use this color. There you go. I'm using some of my old acrylic brush, but I don't have a th thin brush to make finer details. But I'm gonna make do with what I have. Put some highlights on top of that rope. Now this is a little bit dry. Let me see if I could just add some higher chroma red orange here. There you go. Putting some really light touches here. Put some more. Sparkles in the water. So 
So as you can see, water mixables are just like traditional, just so you gotta be careful how you use it and what not to do. And there you have it, folks. Quick little seascape using water mixable oils. If you have any other questions about the techniques or the materials that I use, leave them in the comments. And I'll try to add links to uh, some of the materials for you. Um, so I hope you got a little bit more knowledge in it. As far as this should not, normally it should dry within three to four days. If it stays tacky for a long time, it's most likely because you used a lot of water and you're uh, as a medium. Either you did not clean your brush very well, didn't take it out of the water, water. So that can play into the issue as to why it's staying tacky. Because remember, water evaporates. Oil oxidizes with time. Okay. And that brings me up to the other issue with uh, as far as using water. If you use water to put in your initial wash, water will dry faster then water mixable thinner because it will evaporate faster. But my suggestion to you is once you put on that wash, I suggest that you let that wash dry completely to where you could put your finger and no paint runs off your hand and then go over it with your subsequent layers, either with or without medium. And when I mean medium, meaning like your linseed oil, your stand oil or whatever oil you want to use, uh, whatever medium you want to use, but make sure it is water mixable medium, not traditional. Okay. So I hope I was able to clear up some uh, issues with water mixable oils and um, hopefully you, some of you guys will go back trying to use water mixable. Um, so like I said, any questions, leave in a comment. If you have any ideas with water mixables or you know some technical issues about water mixables that I did not cover, please feel free to um, comment. And uh, I am really good about answering <clears throat> questions or following up on comments made. There you go. With that, folks, I say thank you again for staying with me. Thank you for your support. Please like and subscribe. And let's keep this channel going. I beg of you. And I'll teach you more. I don't have a Patreon page. I don't charge for my paintings. I don't tar charge for teaching. It's all free. All I'm asking is just for your help to pass it on with friends. Share it on and uh, hopefully this algorithm will catch up and uh, we can spread the word. All right, guys, you have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.